Team Arrow working with the SCPD. Gonna go smoothly, I guess. I want to be clear. You work for the SCPD now. You need to learn how we do things. SCPD, freeze! The use of excessive force will not be tolerated. Firearms can only be used as a last resort. Any questions? He does know we have our own uniforms, right? So guys, welcome to my review of Arrow Season 7, Episode 15, otherwise entitled Training Day. And this episode shows Team Arrow finally working with the SCPD, trying to work alongside them, but... It's not exactly going too well for them. We also have Laurel dealing with a particular returning character, and we have the future storyline returning in this episode too. So with all that out of the way, let's dive into the review. So let's start off with Team Arrow working with the SCPD, and this was quite a fun storyline, I felt. I've not been too keen on the whole idea of all of Team Arrow working under the SCPD. I was kind of fine when it was just Oliver, but now that we have Renee, Diggle, and Dinah, and also Felicity, working under the SCPD as well, it was something I was a bit iffy with because it felt very convenient when they did it uh, but seeing them in this episode being trained with the SCPD and them having to just completely refrain from what they would normally do to kind of fit under the regulations and the rules of the SCPD was quite entertaining and you, you could feel the frustration particularly from Oliver and Renee you could feel that they just knew that they were basically being incredibly incompetent. Like, they knew they could do so much more than this. I think Diggle was kind of all right, because Diggle has worked in this kind of environment before. I mean, when he works for Argus, that's basically what he is. So I think he was okay with it all. Like, Diggle seemed quite fine about the end about the whole thing but Oliver and Renee in particular you could tell that they were very very frustrated by all this and I thought that was very entertaining actually just to watch them completely just being like you guys are all just idiots like can we just do our thing and I thought that was quite interesting as well especially because there's a particular scene in this episode when all the when Team Arrow go out with the SCPD to tackle a mission and they are told before the mission that they can't wear their classic uniforms and they can't use their weapons. So Oliver is out there in an SCPD uniform just, just using a simple handgun. He's not in his Green Arrow costume, he can't use his bow and arrow, so it's just like he was completely stripped of everything that makes him a hero. Uh, and same with Rene, like he couldn't wear the Wild Dog costume, Diggle couldn't wear the Spartan costume. It was really, really interesting uh, to kind of put them in that situation. It was quite interesting for the eyes to look at because we've never seen Oliver like in a police uniform before it was a SWAT uniform and I thought that looked really badass actually it was quite a cool little moment so I enjoyed all that and again just the frustration particularly from Oliver and Renee was really really entertaining. Now, Team Arrow is kind of officially reformed in this episode. We have the bunker as well returned in this episode. It's completely rebuilt. Um, it looks pretty much the same as to what it did. It looks like it has a few more computers in it this time than it did last time. But yeah, it's basically the same. But we do have the bunker back, and it was really nice just to be back in the bunker, and the characters say that a lot as well. It's just it's nice to be back here. And it is. I miss the bunker. I miss, you know, that design, because I love the bunker. I think it looks incredible. I think it's one of the best sets in the Arrowverse. It just looks mental, and like, all the green lights and all that. I love it. And all the suits and stuff. It's just it just looks great. Uh, so we got to see the bunker return and Team Arrow is kind of officially reformed, but it's not particularly everybody is back. It's kind of more Oliver, Diggle, uh, Felicity and Renee. And then Dinah is kind of playing both sides. So it's kind of interesting in that way. Uh, but I really enjoyed that just having Team Arrow reformed, like because basically what happens is after their kind of second mission in the episode when they basically kind of do things the Team Arrow way in the under the regulations of the police force. They kind of r negotiate this deal where Team Arrow are able to operate outside of the SCPD in their own little in their own little team, their own little group, uh, but they're still affiliated with the SCPD, so it's still legal. So I actually like this a lot more than them just working for the SCPD because that would be again it's kind of convenient, it's kind of weird, and again as it proves in this episode, it's not very effective, but. For them to be able to work, as Renee called it, as the SCPD Black Ops unit is actually really fun. And that's a lot better. They're able to work out of the bunker. They can wear their costumes. They can use their weapons and still do it legally and still clean up the city in a legal way. I think it works so much better than just making them cops. I think it's just it's a lot more interesting. And again, just having them back in the bunker, working as Team Arrow, but still affiliated with the SCPD. It's a smart way of doing it. We also got to see Dinah suit up in this episode, back in the Black Canary suit. We've not seen Dinah in the Black Canary suit since season six, I believe, since the season six finale. I don't think she's suited up at all this season. So it was actually really nice to have Dinah back in the costume when uh, they kind of went out on this mission and Oliver said suit up. Like it showed a shot of Oliver and Renee and Diggle. And I was like, 
is Dinah going to be in the suit or is she working as a cop? Like, you couldn't quite tell. And they did this reveal moment where Dinah came out and took out all these guys as the Black Canary. It was really nice to have Dinah back in the suit. I really like that costume. I really like Dinah as the Black Canary. So it was awesome to have her there and just kind of kicking ass as she does. Uh, but she does also officially lose her Canary Cry in this episode. Like, we knew obviously that she lost it a couple episodes ago when Stanley slit her throat, but... In this episode, you see her actually try to use it, and it just doesn't work, and it actually causes her quite a bit of pain. So, yeah, Dinah's cry is gone, uh, but she's still the Black Canary, and she's also still going to be working as the captain of the police department, and she's kind of going to be playing both sides, and I'm sure if Team Arrow need Dinah to come in as the Black Canary for a mission or so, I'm sure she'll quite happily come over and join them. Now, Laurel gets a call from Slabside in this episode, and it's from none other than Ben Turner, aka Bronze Tiger, who brings her to Slabside to say, look... Oliver promised me freedom. I've not had it yet, and I know that Diaz has died, and I know who killed him, so I can tell you who kills him if you give me my freedom. Now, this was really cool. I was so happy to see Michael Jai White back in this episode because he's been one of the standout things this season for me. I mean, obviously, now in this back half, ever since Oliver got out of prison, it's not been, you know, he's not really been in the season, but especially in that first half, and episode seven in particular, he was just incredible. Um, so to see him come back in this episode was really, really nice. And again, him kind of negotiating it, because it's, it's true, Oliver did promise him that he would get him out. Um, so it's kind of interesting that, you know, Oliver's just kind of abandoned him and he's now turned to Laurel to help him with that. I think that's really fun. And he knows who murdered Diaz. Now, this does kind of confirm that Diaz is dead. There has been some speculation about if Diaz is still alive. Um, he still could be. He, he still could be like there's been no what what makes me suspicious on the whole thing is that there's been no official statement saying that Kirk Acevedo has left the series like Kirk himself hasn't said anything he's kind of been teasing on social media that he's still alive and the CW hasn't come out and said oh yeah Kirk Acevedo has officially left the show Ricardo Diaz is dead but the characters and the show are acting as if he is so I'm just going to take it that he is dead right now but I, I'm, I'm not going to be surprised if he does come back uh, but what Bronze Tiger specifically asked for is not even necessarily his freedom, but access to see his son. We find out that Bronze Tiger actually has a son. And then this is where it gets really interesting because we see his son, he comes in to see him, and his name is Connor Hawk. Hmm. So the Connor Hawk that we see in the future storyline is Bronze Tiger's son. That's very, very interesting because obviously we did find out in episode 14 that Diggle is his adopted father. So that was when we were all questioning it. We were all sat there last week, if you remember in my review for that episode, and we were just all really confused, and we were thinking, well, how does that work? Uh, because this is the same actor who played him in the Legends of Tomorrow Future timeline, which he was his biological son. So how is he adopted? Like, what's going on? Um, but this is Bronze Tiger's son, because Bronze Tiger, when he's talking to his son, he calls him Connor, and he also says Hawk. So this is so this is Connor Hawk. That Connor Hawk in the future is Bronze Tiger's son. So what happens then? Because I, I have to think that Bronze Tiger is going to die this season, and Diggle because obviously Bronze Tiger saved Diggle's life back in season three, back in the whole uh, Suicide Squad storyline. That Diggle feels like he owes him, and maybe he adopts his son. Maybe that's it. I don't know. That's all I can really think of right now. Make sure you let me know your th your theories about this because. This was quite a big reveal. Like This was quite a mind-blowing reveal to find out that this character who we've been dealing with in the future, who we all just assumed was Diggle's son, is actually Bronze Tiger's biological son. Kind of mental. Also, Laurel seems to be onto Emiko in this. She basically knows that uh, that she killed uh, killed Diaz. Basically, that's what Bronze Tiger says. Her after Bronze Tiger was allowed access to see his son, he tells Laurel that you know I'm a man of my word, and he says that yes, there is a woman who walked past my cell after murdering Diaz in green leather. So obviously, that is being the new Green Arrow, which is of course Emiko Queen. So she brings him into the off, brings her into into her office, and basically has a bit of a uh, interaction with her. And this is very reminiscent of the comics. Emiko and the Black Canary do not get on in the comics they are not very good friends they don't have a very strong relationship so it seems like they may be giving laurel some of this which i think would be really fun now we do have so the future storyline in this episode and this was again okay i've not been loving the future in the back half it's been very kind of just a bit meh like there's not been a lot happening and again this episode's kind of the same thing we do have felicity's message revealed and it was played as like this big reveal but it doesn't really say much like it basically just says oh yeah me and my father we separated you to protect you because we love you and stay away from the glades like that that's basically what she says like get out of star city so it's, it's a bit strange it was just like you know for this big reveal like oh what felicity kept and what she wanted her kids to find out in the future it was just oh yeah 
stay safe, we love you, bye. That was literally all it was. So it's it a bit weird, uh, but we do see that William and Mia are going to be going into the glades in the future. So probably for this future Star City episode we're getting next week. And uh, I have to say that the, the shot of the glades where you see the wall, really awesome. That is a really cool looking shot. Really good CGI where you see Star City surrounding it. It's completely destroyed and just horrible. And then you have the glades with a wall kind of just all around it. Like a massive wall where the glades is all built up and looks really cool. Really nice shot. I really like that. And I am very much looking forward to the whole future episode next week. Hopefully we get plenty of Roy. But uh, as far as the future goes in this episode, not that much really happened. Overall though, decent episode of Arrow once again, another really good one for this season. I really enjoyed all the SCPD stuff, even though it was kind of filler in a way, I still think it worked really cool, and again, it got us to the point where now we have Team Arrow back in full force, still working under the SCPD, I think works really well, and again, just having Bronze Tiger back in this episode really gave it that feel that I had back at the beginning of the season, where I was just so happy with Bronze Tiger as a character, because I think he's incredible, and I think Michael Jai White does a really good job with everything, so to see him back in this episode too was really, really awesome, and overall, I really like this episode and i'm very very excited for next week's in particular so thank you guys for tuning into this episode of dc central if you want to see more dc content like this be sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you don't miss an upload and i hope to see you guys again next time